Today, I will show you how to assemble the 3D printed parts, hoses and the electrical components for this smart self rotting plant pot. Let's go! This guide is part of my video series on how to build the smart self rotting plant pot flora. If you don't know about it yet, I suggest you first watch the introductory video linked in the corner. Okay, if you're still here, you probably already have all the required components and have soldered the circuit board using the instructions from my last video. Then let's stop wasting time and jump straight to the assembly guide. The first step is to push the capacitive soil moisture sensor through the rectangular hole in the 3D printed bottom part of Flora and fix it in this position with two screws. If your 3D printed part has slight inaccuracies or your soil moisture sensor is a little thicker than normal, it may not fit through the hole. In this case you can use a small file, such as a fingernail file, to enlarge it. Then take the hose with the largest diameter and cut it to 11 cm length using cutting pliers or a sharp knife. Push it through the large hole from above. It's supposed to have a tight fit, but you can use some kind of twisting motion to get it in there. In the end it should stick out about 1 cm at the bottom. Now do the same with the soft, small diameter hose. Cut it into two pieces with 18 and 5.5 cm length. They have to go through the two holes next to each other. But which hose goes into which hole does not matter here. Push the short hose through from below so that it's flush with the top side of the 3D printed part. This hose is intended to serve as the water inlet for the pump. For the water outlet we have the longer hose. Push this one through from above so that it protrudes 4 cm on the bottom side. Now it's time for our silicon sealant. If yours came with a tip like this, you are in luck as it will make it much easier and more precise to use. Cut off the top of the tip to create a small outlet hole like this. Use it on all the spots where the hoses come out of the holes and the gap between the soil moisture sensor and the 3D printed part. Also put a quite large amount of silicon on the edge of the outer housing part of Flora. Now take the 3D printed bottom part and place it inside the outer housing. Make sure that the soil moisture sensor is on the opposite side of the two small holes in the housing while doing so. Then mount it there with the help of six screws. Put some additional silicon in the gap between these two parts to make absolutely sure that no water can leak through. You can also apply a thin layer of acrylic sealant or even nail polish on the edges of the soil moisture sensor if you have that. This prevents water from slowly entering there and extends the lifetime of the sensor. Now we let everything dry for one or two days. You can check by touching it with your finger. If the silicon no longer feels sticky, it's probably dry enough. After that, we can connect the water pump. If yours doesn't already have the cables attached, check out my video about soldering the electronic components for Flora in the corner. The 3D printed mounting parts for the pump and the battery look very similar, but the diameters are slightly different. The easiest way is to just try out which one fits best with which component. Then plug the longer outlet hose onto the central connector of the pump 
and the shorter inlet holes onto the other. Finally, screw in the two screws for the pump holder. The next step is a first test of water tightness. Pour in some water and leave it there for an hour or more. Then check everything for water leaks or wet spots. It is important to do this test early as many places will be inaccessible later and we will no longer be able to fix a leak there. If everything is dry, we can continue by sliding the six cables of the water level sensor through the large hose from below. After that, insert your soldered circuit board by aligning its buttons with the holes in the housing and then securing it with four screws. Plug in the JST connector of the six cables into the circuit board and pull the cables out from the other side as far as possible. The cable ends on this side must be attached to the cable holder so that they are on the other side than the mounting hole. These will form the water level sensor. You can use a toothpick or the backside of a knife to get the cables into the tight fit of the 3D printed part. The correct order of the cables is absolutely crucial here. The cable marked with the 100 on the circuit board is the one for 100% water level and must be attached to the topmost position of the cable holder. The 75% water level cable next to it needs to go to the position below the 100% one and so on. The last one is the ground cable as marked on the circuit board and must be mounted at the very bottom of the cable holder. Also, don't cut off the tint ends of the cables as they will prevent rusting. Now bend the cables and mount the 3D printed part to the right of the soil moisture sensor with one screw. To make sure that no water can get through the hose when you accidentally turn the plant pot over, we put some additional silicon between the cables. A small tool or toothpick is useful for this. Do that on both ends of the hose. Even more silicon needs to be applied to the underside of the inner housing, which will be attached next. Before placing it inside the plant pot, insert the outlet hose through the upper hole and make sure the two sides of the refill hole are aligned. Then mount it with five screws and seal the inner joint with some additional silicon. After the silicon has dried, it's time for our second water tightness test. Fill in some water in the tank and this time make sure there is no water on the inside of the plant pot after one hour. In the meantime, we can already start working on the watering ring. To do so, we start by shortening the hard hose to 33.5 cm in length. Also, cut off two short pieces of the remaining soft hose with a length of 2.5 cm each. Connect the hard hose to both sides of the T-shaped connector using the soft hose as a coupling. The third side of the connector should be facing down, at a 90 degree angle to the watering ring. Now it's time to create a few holes, where the water can later shoot out. Pin needles like this come in handy for this task, but you can use other tools as well. To make sure that the needle doesn't go too deep and pierces both walls of the hose, I 3D printed this small tool. Pierce one hole about every 15 mm on the inside of the watering ring. To complete the watering ring, connect it to the hose that comes out of the plant pot and press the ring into the circumferential groove. Now we continue working on the bottom side. Mount the battery using its 3D printed holder and two screws. Plug in the cable for the battery, the pump and the soil moisture sensor and bend the cables. With the GST connectors, there's nothing you can do wrong. But the soil moisture sensor has only a simple female pin header on one side, where it's important that the black cable gets connected to the pin labeled with ground on the board. Make sure that the power switch is in the off position before doing so. 
After that, you can plug in the ESP32 into the board. Notice that four pins on each side don't get connected. Then plug in the battery cable from the circuit board to the ESP32. The last thing you need to do is cut a small rectangular hole in the bottom of a planter where the soil moisture sensor will fit through and place your favorite plant inside of flora. And we're done! I hope everything worked out well for you. If you liked my explanations for this assembly guide, then please give this video a thumbs up. However, if there are any unanswered questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. In the next video of this series, we will finally upload the program code to the now finished Flora Plant Pod. So remember to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss the release. If you're watching this video at some day in the future, you can already find the link to this video over there and down here is another video from my channel for you. Alright guys, that's it for today. Stay tuned and see you next time.